world so far. Have we done a good job? Well, keep the energy going right now because I'm going to bring out from Agents of Shield, Elizabeth Hinstridge, everybody! <laughs> oh, this is the yeah. We're going to uh, we're going to organize the world right now. Uh, so how's it? How's, how how are you doing? You good? How, you enjoying St. Louis? Yeah. Right. Is it working? Can everyone hear Miss Hintridge? Yeah? Sure, yeah. This is so civilized. Sure. That's the way we do it in St. Louis. There you go. Okay. Wow, this is the smallest glass I've ever seen. I, I, I'll, we'll double up. We'll double, yeah. Water shot. There you go. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. Well, that's well for you. Cheers yourself. Uh, all right, do you mind if I start off some questions and then we'll go to the go for it. audience? All right. Yeah. Um, so, I'm Mavid. Yeah. Um, that is one of the most impressive, like, piece, like, it's a, it was one of the more impressive episodes of the entire season, but it was also, like, an exceptional, like, just piece of acting, um, and one of, like, the best, like, pieces of acting that I've seen from that show, and I mean that as no insult to you. just the show, like, <laughs> at all, but, like, it was just that, it was yeah, that, that was really, really, everyone else, <laughs> pretty <laughs> awful, uh, breathed out loud there, uh, no, but like, you, you just did, it was such a powerhouse kind of performance for you, oh, um, thank you. what was the process like, going into that, like, acting by yourself, like, for almost like three quarters of the entire episode, like, what was that like for you? Yeah, I mean, they, they told me about the potential idea of it happening, and, and I just didn't, I just, did not think it was gonna happen ever. So I was like, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. And then it came, there was a, a script, and I was thinking, nah, there's no, this is not gonna get past all the different levels that it needs, all the different producers, all the different Disney, ABC, you know, I just thought, great idea, but too brave, kind of. I just, mm -hmm. it was brand new, da -da. So then, but I got the script, I thought, wow, let's learn it, <laughs> you know, just in case. And then all of a sudden we were on set, we were shooting, and that was it, so, I mean, I was very flattered to be given the opportunity and to be entrusted in, with that kind of challenge. <laughs> um, but it was great. I mean, the hardest thing I've ever done, for sure. I take my hat off to Clark Gregg, who's our lead and just carries the show. And I had to carry an episode. I was thinking, this is, I called him and I was like, this is a lot of pressure. How do you deal with this every week? Because being further down the call sheets, I'm kind of nice, nestled in there with my best mate, Fitz. It's, it's easy. We kind of come in, we go, ah, it's fine. Whereas this was all day, every day. It was awesome. We, I, we shot a lot in the deserts around LA. We kind of went on a little group trip and all stayed in the hotel, very, very strange hotel. Um, <laughs> but there was a heat wave in LA at the time, so it was 110, no shade. We were like moving very quickly. Most takes, we just most scenes we just did one or two times from from di the different angles. So it was it was fast. But it was it was good. But I have never been so nervous for anything to come out because we shot it in daylight, but then they changed it to be blue. So nobody had any idea what it was going to look like. We'd never done it before. Um, it, the director's cut was 22 minutes over. So tons of the story came out. So it was just, I mean, I was a ball of nerves before that. Is there any chance that we'll ever get to see those 22 minutes? I hope so, because there's... There's significant parts of the story, like there's this whole thing with her necklace and she talks about her grandma, that it would be nice, it would be nice to see yeah. that, but. Uh, well, going off of um, Mavith, like if your character was absent. I feel like I have a little twitch every time you say it. It's like, what, so, Mavith? I get Mavith. like a little weird Mavith. PTSD. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so going off of that, your character was like absent for like the first third of the season from the rest of the team. Uh, then when you came back, you had like this sort of like, you had a hard time getting back into the swing of things and, and, and with Fitz and everything. Uh, where would you say that your character is at now, like with, with Will and with Fitz and everything else that's going on? Um, where do you think that Gemma is at with all of that now? Sorry for spoilers if you're not up to date, but Will did not make it, mm -hmm. and she knows that, and I think that was really the only, the final obstacle between Simmons and Fitz getting together or trying to build their relationship in a positive way. Um, so now that she knows that he didn't make it, she's like, they're, they're in a good place right now. 
I mean, this is Marvel and it's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so who knows how long people can stay in a good place. I did a <laughs> round of interviews with Jeff Loeb last weekend, the head of Marvel Television, and it was interesting and also kind of soul-destroying to hear him just like keep dropping in there to journalists, but it is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so who knows what's going to happen. So uh, now I'm really scared, but so far they're in a good place. Well, so going off of that, like, how, like, are you guys done shooting the season? Like, how much longer do you have to go before you're done if you're not done yet? We have a while longer to go, yeah, so we haven't finished yet. So, how far in advance would you say, like, like, you get the scripts and everything, like, how far in advance do you know the story? Like, is it, like, script by script? Like, do they tell oh, you yeah. anything about the arcs that you're going to be... No, are you crazy? No! We know, we get the, we get the episode the day before sometimes the day off and then you know script changes happen all the time so you'll often learn your lines and then you'll wake up you know in the morning and there'll be a whole new set of lines to learn so I mean it's always changing and then sometimes we'll get red pages which are they'll write the script and knowing that that's not the real ending to the script and that on the day of shooting they'll hand you red pages and if you see a red page run because it usually means you're about to die <laughs> um, and there are pages that you can't print or photocopies don't photocopy them or something some marvel top secret thing maybe i shouldn't have told you who knows <laughs> um, so then sometimes it changes just before you're about to shoot they'll hand you a page and say actually this is what's happening and then you've got to memorize it all right there and right, right, right. do it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, we get a lot of takes. <laughs> this is a bit, and we don't have to do it It's right not like, get it right the second time, go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah, good. Uh, well, how do you feel about going with the audience? Yes, I'd love right. to. Great. Uh, go ahead. Right there, please. Actually, this kind of uh, goes in with what you were just talking about. I was real curious. I can't think of another TV show that uh, you start out the show, these are your heroes. These are the stars of the show. And then, oh gosh, one of those stars is a villain. So I want to ask about it. When did you guys find out that the, the what was going to happen with Ward, and how did you, as a cast, react, or or uh, how how did that affect you? That suddenly, instead of your cast of good guys, somebody you started this show with is now your bad guy. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, Brett found out the week before we found out. So he didn't know from the start that he was going to be Hydra. Um, otherwise, he wouldn't have taken the part, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, so he found out the week before, and he was kind of like, what is wrong with Brett? Is he tired today? So, but he was nervous about how we would feel. And then the week after, they told us. They told the other people, um, the rest of the cast all together, and I wasn't working that day, so they told me on my own. Um, but they all went into, I think they all went into my trailer and... Um, they told them and I mean it's so silly because it's not real but <laughs> <laughs> we were all annoyed at Brett <laughs> like mad because we, Tim Fruit, because we did everything together and all our days were we did so much ensemble stuff in that first season and so we were all in together all day every day and it was just it was hard to get over and then from that point we never really I have had a handful of scenes with Brett since then. So it's kind of sad that I don't get to work with him as much, but I'm just starting to get over it. But his character keeps getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> Good question, thank you. Okay, so I wanted to know what was your least favorite like thing to shoot and why? Like, did you have anything that you were like, oh, I really don't want to do this or something? Um, I mean, as much as I love that Simmons getting together, it is so weird shooting kissing scenes with Ian. <laughs> right? I mean, I was so excited when I reading the script. I was so excited and so happy that it was happening for the characters. And then when it comes to shoot it, it's just, it's like kissing your brother. <laughs> and Ian, I'm not, he's not a bad kisser. Boy does good. Oh. <laughs> it's just so strange. So I guess those scenes are the ones that I'm really happy for the characters, but it's it's kind of it's kind of awkward to, to film. <laughs> uh, going going off of that, how would you yeah. say like um, your character of Jimmy has kind of like grown from like even like just like the pilot uh, to now? How would you like can, can you like say anything about that? Yeah, sure. I think from the pilot she was half a person in a way. 
Fitzsimmons were always referred to as one character. Um, and it was really cool to be in a double act, and especially near the start when there was so much pressure on the show, and um, you know there was a lot of expectations to have somebody, to have Ian always there by my side was so comforting and lovely. And you know I love their relationship, but throughout the seasons we've seen them grow as individuals and kind of have to stand on their own and make their own decisions. And that's been really nice to see Simmons kind of have to step up to the plate and be a bit more of an individual. Um, and then everything she went through on Mabeth she was like, you know, helped her to um, become even stronger and, and definitely showed her some flaws, whereas I think before she didn't really think she had flaws. <laughs> so now at least she knows <laughs> what she needs to work on. Great. Uh, go ahead, please. Um, my question is kind of what you were just talking about. Um, in the beginning, Fitzsimmons was like my favorite. The duo was just amazing. Like even the name is so great, and they just had this beautiful chemistry. And I was wondering, with um, all that's happened to each character, if you guys will ever get back to that kind of <laughs> that kind of like beautiful. Can you just take a phone call? Yes. <laughs> the doctor. He's the doctor. He's He's the doctor. Call. 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 Yeah. I'm just wondering if you'd ever get back to that kind of relationship because I feel like it's really been missing and now they're stepping into this new kind of relationship and I don't know if they'll ever be able to go back and I was wondering what your thoughts were. Yeah, great question. I think they're getting there. They're starting, we've seen them kind of starting to work together, especially with, you know, we saw them try and work together to get Will back and um, there was a lot of tension when they were trying to do that just because of all the different emotional feelings that are involved. But the fact that they were working well together. And I think that in the end is, is what has brought them back together, is that they work so much better with each other than anyone else. And if they want to solve a problem, the problem is greater than any issues that they're going through. So they, they're they kind of forced to have to work together again. For dramatic effect. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think they'll get back to that place. I think they're slowly trying to find that language between the two of them again. That's good, because I can't oh, <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Cool hair. Thanks. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> How has Agents of Shield affected you through acting, um, and when you first went into it? Um, I mean, t it's completely changed my life. I was um, living on a sofa out of a suitcase with zero money, and now, like, it's nice to have a job and <laughs> <laughs> checks each week that come in and help pay for your rent and stuff. So, in that way, st stabilizing my life has been huge. Um, and then also I'd never done a TV show before where, you know, usually in a, well always in a movie or a play you know exactly where your character's gonna get end up, uh, gonna end up and you just have to figure out how you get there. Whereas with this, you have no idea they can give me a script tomorrow that says actually you have a 10 year old daughter that you just abandoned and you just have to go, oh okay, yeah, 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 no, I've been playing that this whole time. So you have to be a bit more flexible and at the start I found that tricky because Kind of a control freak and I'd like to know exactly what's happening but it's good because it frees you up and you just can kind of be in the moment a bit more and um, so I think that's the main thing acting wise. Great question. Yeah good question. Hello. Hi. Um, so I post live with a group every Tuesday night. There's 13,000 people and we watch the show every night and we're just posting back and Oh, awesome! So um, I asked them what questions they wanted to ask you. Yeah. Um, and they wanted to know if you felt that the guilt that Gemma feels for Lash parallels the guilt that Fitz feels for what happened to Will, and how that's going to affect going forward. Yeah, I think at this point, I mean, every agent is carrying around some crazy amount of guilt for something that someone they've crossed off or couldn't save or but yeah and I think that it, it in a way they're kind of more on the same level now Fitz and Simmons that they have experienced you know the the weight of their mistakes um so yeah and and everything with flashes and well, I can't really say that <laughs> but yes yes <laughs> That's gotta be tricky because, like, you you oh know, gosh, like you know, like a little us. bit. You you probably know about a month ahead of us, right? Yeah. So, like, I yeah. bet that's gotta be just eat at you so much, oh like, because you want to. Yeah. Because, like, you, I know, I would imagine you want to be able to talk about it, yes, but you that's can't. The thing. Yeah. And when you don't want to spoil things, because 
you know, part of the part of the joy of Marvel is that they are so great at keeping secrets and then but they keep the secrets so that it's the best for you guys to watch it and have the best experiences and you know, spoilers are the worst. So I just don't wanna like take away from people's experiences and get shot down by Marvel by some drone that is obviously <laughs> 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 just can't see it. Uh, go ahead. Hello. Thank you for coming to St. Louis. Yeah, thanks for having me. I actually am a chemistry student, and oh, wow. uh, I was wondering. Oh, yeah. me and my friends just love you. On and as someone who's you worry about what people that actually know what they're talking about think about, <laughs> <laughs> try to make look like we talk about. You like to watch this show and go like, I know what that is. Oh, cool. And then my family's like, I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> but as someone who struggles sometimes to say all of those big words, how do you deal with it? I mean, <laughs> it's funny because people often say, gosh, you have a real hard job, you have to say long words, and then I'll watch Ming Na Wen do an 18 hour day of fighting over and over again, and I think, I've got a pretty good side of this deal. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to learn some, but I, I, I think you just, I learn through sound, I learn all my uh, lines through, like I remember the sound of the words, so I think, it doesn't necessarily matter to me how long the word is, but I'm sure I've butchered a lot of your wonderful chemistry words, so I'm sorry about that, but... It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really do. <laughs> Hi, thanks for coming. Um, I've noticed throughout the series there's been a couple Doctor Who references sprinkled in. Yeah. I'm wondering if that's you, and that sort of leads to a bigger question of how much influence of your personality do you guys get to bring to the, to the show? Uh, great question. Um, I mean, all our writers are huge sci-fi geeks anyway, um, so that was them. Uh, uh, and the influence we have is, uh, it's always a conversation, I think, especially being British in a show that's written by Americans, it's, you know, you, we have, most of our conversations are kind of, oh, well, I wouldn't quite, it wouldn't quite be said that way, or what, you know, there's definitely flexibility there, but they are so brilliant, so much more intelligent than me, and they also see the bigger picture. So sometimes you're in a scene and you don't 100% you don't understand why you're saying what you're saying. And, but they're great, you can go and talk to them and they'll say, well, you know, just wait till the next script, then you'll understand. So there's a lot of trust there, but yeah, it's definitely flexible. Most of the time I just kind of bow down to their superiority and go, you're gonna make this cooler than I could ever make it. Yeah. Congratulations on such a, such a successful show. Oh, thank um, you. Everybody here loves it. I have a two-part question. You, as an actor, what do you think Gemma would feel about if she suddenly developed power? And then, what would you want it to be? Uh, she'd be freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think would be kind of great for her. Because um, she's been on a journey with how she feels about powered people. Um, Daisy, obviously, being an inhuman has, has forced her to uh, be less black and white about it. Um, so, she, But she would go insane, I think. I think she'd try everything to try and reverse it or get back to normal or something. Um, and then, what would I like it to be? Um, I would love it to be like that she suddenly has the most amazing martial arts skills because <laughs> having said that I don't want to spend 18 hours a day fighting which I would obviously then have to do but just to see the look on people's faces that you know she's probably in some sort of combat training but I doubt she's ever going to get very good at it <laughs> but just for her to like whip out that even if it's just like hey can you get me that from the kitchen and she just gets a glass and really flips it around and just has it kind of casually that walks off doesn't say anything. Those moments I think would be great. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Um, so this is a question from me and my friend Hannah who's in Minneapolis. Uh, how quick did you and Ian become friends on the show or was it kind of weird at first or did you guys become best friends pretty quickly? Yeah, it was instant. <laughs> I mean, I can say that because he's not here. I imagine he was probably like, ah, it took a while. Um, <laughs> that was good. I mean, I feel like we were all thrown in it together. The whole cast, we jumped so quickly and Clark sat us down um, on the first day and just said, hey, we need to stick together through this because you know, there's gonna be a lot of outside voices and 
we just need to concentrate on the work that we're doing and not read anything. He told us not to read any reviews, um, not to go searching for things on Twitter that you don't want to see. Um, and, and that, at, at the time, I thought, well, this is nice, getting a pep talk. But actually, I, I think about that often, and I, and I still don't really read reviews. And um, just because it takes away from, I'm not doing it so that a critic writes a good review. It's great if they do, but that's not why I wanted to get into this crazy world. So um, yes, Ian and I gelled very quickly, but so did all of us. And we're still there for each other. We're a family, and that's why you know, the episode where Hunter and Bobby was the spies goodbye, that it was so difficult because anyone new that comes in is then automatically part of the family. And so you have a kind of a connection that is a really strong bond. And so when people leave that, it's, that's the flip side of it, that that bit's really hard. Whereas if you didn't really like them to begin with, then it's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you give us any insight at all into the most wanted show that's coming out? Like no, because I have no idea. Perfect. Yeah, but I, I'm. I hear little bits, and I think it's going to be really, really cool. And Adrian and Nick, who play Bobby and Hunter, are just the best people. Like they deserve to be headlining a show. They're so talented, and um, yeah, and it's going to be amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Sorry, but that was... No, 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 no. <laughs> just like, a no answer, basically. No, I assume, I, I assume you probably did, but I'm interested in the show, so I had to ask. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. So, uh, you're Marvel, and then on the other channel, there's DC. Yeah. Are you guys on set aware of the other shows and what they're doing, and is, is the rivalry, like, real? Because for the fans, it's real. Like, <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> We either love both or we love one and hate the other. And wow, okay. I was wondering, like, for the cast. <laughs> Where are the flashbacks? I'm pretty sure everybody <laughs> loves both in here because I see every costume, but yeah. For the fans, like, let us know, like, is it on set? Do you guys talk about Flash and Arrow and Legends of Tomorrow and then uh, also, like, Daredevil and all those guys? Do you converse with those guys and stuff like that and, and see those people? Um, well, we shoot in LA. Daredevil is in New York, New York, I want to say. Um, so, no, I mean, I met Charlie today, and he's really, really, really nice. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, my personal take is that anything that's going to try and uh, make really cool stuff for people to watch, if that's sci fi or not, or drama or whatever it is, is great by me. And I think the more, the merrier. And, you know, there's a if people want to see it, then the best thing is to make as much as possible and make it as good as possible. Um, I don't watch the DC shows just because we're always filming. Um, <laughs> but I, you see, I mean, they see the actors round and about and kind of at different events and stuff, and they're always super lovely. I don't, there's no, I don't know if this is disappointing, but there's no crazy rivalry. At least I don't think there is. Because if you don't, it could be one of those things where, you're the one everybody hates if you don't realize. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know, but I don't think so. Thank you. But, oh, um, I love, um, I don't know if loved is the right word, but I thought when Coulson's hand got chopped off, <laughs> that was, I don't know, I just thought it was so cool. I didn't see it coming at all. Because Mac ended up chopping it off, right? Or was it Fitz? I forget. No. Mac? I think it was Mac. It was Mac, right. great, brilliant. Thanks for being here. <laughs> I just thought that was so cool, and then the different versions of his hand, and seeing Coulson kind of have to deal with something again, and um, I think it really, we saw him go through some kind of deep questioning times. I felt like I'd, I'd love seeing Clark do those scenes because he's so brilliant at the light stuff, and then seeing him do kind of the darker side of Coulson, I think is just, he's just a brilliant actor, and I think there's nothing he can't do, so. I just, and also I'm obsessed with Agent Coulson, so I just think <laughs> anything, anything that adds to his kind of journey, I, I really like. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for taking care of the microphone. That's very nice yeah. of you. Matt doesn't mess around. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, I was just, I know you're doing Marvel now, but is there anything like after that you want to do, or anything like any genres you want to explore in acting? Oh, sure, all of them. I mean, anywhere that someone will give me a job, I am there. <laughs> I'd love to do theatre again. I think that's something that, that's what I first fell in love with and um, 
I think it's the most magical art form, so I would love to, to get the chance to do that again. Um, but I think for a second during this hiatus, I'm just going to go home and be with my family and, you know, maybe just do them some one-woman shows, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, all of it, I'd love to do some period stuff again. And I mean, this is my first sci-fi thing, really, I've done, that I'm... I'm falling in love with the genre, so anything else sci-fi would be fine too. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. I have two quick questions for you. One is um, currently we're seeing Gemma uh, deal with not only the guilt over Lash, but I think she's also feeling very incompetent or um, helpless, mm -hmm. um, which I think she's forgetting that she kicked ass on Mavith and survived on her own. So right. do you ever feel, um, is there anything that Gemma's doing or has done that you just kind of cringe and go, why are you doing that, Gemma? Oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Uh, I think that guilt makes you forget everything that you are capable of. And I think it's a very kind of poisonous emotion that um, makes you riddled with self-doubt and um, feeling like you're not worthy or good enough. And I think this is, you know, part of her grieving process over Will too, that she felt like she she chose herself over him, even though he was saying that she had to go and her plan was always to come back. And, you know, so I think that that's something she just has to go through. And I, yeah, I would love to scream at her that, hey, what about all this great stuff over here too? That she just, but that's real life. You don't see that when you're going through something or self-doubting, you, you do need someone there to say, Hey, you're pretty cool, actually. Don't worry about it. Which is why Fitz is so great, because he knows her so well. Um, but yeah, I, f I feel the same. And then my other question was, you had tweeted a while ago um, that you absolutely love the upside-down smiley emoji. Oh my gosh, I love him. Love him. Why? <laughs> What's up? Why? Oh. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't like him, but I, I don't have as... kind of art. <laughs> What did we do? I find them so cute. I have emoji pillows. My whole house is filled with like little cute weird things. I have um, Groot. And there's the, the little Groot where you know you get those ones that like Little shape. baby Groot? Yeah. And they're in the like, you just, I don't know what you call them, but. Flower Huh? Yeah, the baby dancing Groot. Like anyway. Yeah. Uh, is it the. Pop vinyl. No, it's like, a, they're like smaller than that. Maybe it's still that. I don't know. Anything cute with a face on, like just get obsessed with, like an unhealthy obsession. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. And also, I think that the show and actually the Marvel Universe in and of itself does a great job of character development. And I think with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., especially with Clark going from the big screen the small screen, how much of that is writers or Clark himself <coughs> saying, this isn't going to become the Agent Coulson show, this is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we're going to develop these characters, we're going to make this something where you're rooting for everybody or you're rooting against everybody. Right. Um, uh, I, I mean, it was Joss's brainchild, Joss, and, uh, Joss Whedon, his brother Jed Whedon, Jed's wife Marissa Tancheron, they created these characters and um, in some ways, Fitzsimmons are based on Mo and Jed. And I think they really wanted to see normal people, everyday people that, you know, the, the plan was really for them not to have superpowers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, some of that's changed. Um, but just to see, you know, when a building collapsed in the Avengers movies, who's in that building? Who's trying to help the people on the ground? And, you know, we're so lucky in that we get 22 hours of television every season to be able to tell longer stories and, and tell the stories that you might not, you know, you don't, you have two, uh, two and a half hours, depending on whether you're seeing Avengers or Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> depends, duration depends. Um, but we're lucky that we get to tell the story, so I think that was, you know, kind of the point of doing a Marvel TV show, because, you know, you have, there's no point making something if the movies can do it better because the movies are so amazing, why would you bother? Um, so our kind of deal was that we wanted to show more character development maybe just because we have more time. Thank you. Thanks. Ooh. Oh, he looks like he's got a good question. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he's <doing> very suave. <laughs> um, so with um, S.H.I.E.L.D. members being 
as You're being able to see people take leave, like how they were given those bracelets where they could call on S.H.I.E.L.D. at any time. And last episode you saw Mac on vacation, so what I'm wondering is, will Gemma get vacation time? <laughs> oh, I hope so. Wouldn't that be cool? That's a great question. I might have to pitch that idea to the right. <laughs> Shield agents aren't very good at taking vacation because as much as they kind of you know feel like they're tied to the job, the job becomes who they are. So I think taking vacation is hard. But I'd like to see Fitzsimmons let loose a little bit. You know, they'd probably have the geekiest vacation ever. <laughs> Thank you. Great question. Where do you where do you think uh, they would go? Uh, they'd probably go to the seaside in England, which if you've ever been is the least beachy, sunny, dry place you've ever seen. So my granny used to go to the, uh, Scunthorpe is a, is a place in England, and she used to, oh no, Skegness is like a big beach town, and she would drive with her best friend Sheila in the car, and they would sit in the car, take their sandwiches out, because it was always raining, but they'd drive up as far so they could see the sea, eat their sandwiches, and drive home. That's kind of like a seaside <laughs> trip in England, so they'd probably just do that. Thanks. <laughs> you want to come? Right? It's, uh, it's I can't wait. Great. I can't oh, wait. wait. Let's, go, wait. let's yeah. go right now. <laughs> Hi. Um, thanks. Um, I really enjoyed your episode where Gemma got to be undercover in Hydra. That was just such a cool, stylish episode. I oh, really loved that great. episode. Great, thank you. Um, and I'm wondering how you felt acting uh, once everybody realized Sky was an inhuman, and or that something was going on. You didn't know what was going on at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, Gemma had one of the most striking reactions to that. That she was just like, "I'm shutting this down, people." You know. Yeah. So. How did you feel when you read that you needed to do that? How did you feel acting it? I think you don't always get to be the good guy in that episode, and it feels nice when you are and everyone likes you. Um, but I thought that was a really... Um, I felt she was brave voicing an opinion that she knew was going to be unpopular and that she didn't even really like, but kind of she wanted to be loyal to science and say that this is an option and maybe, you know, put that option on the table. Um, but it... It's tough. I think what our show does really well and something I'm really proud of is that we do show, you know, lots of different opinions and different options and we let maybe the audience decide what they think and it kind of parallels a lot of what's happening in our society about, you know, accepting people that are different and some people don't want to accept them and what's the alternative and so it's kind of a nice kind of Marvel prism to, to try to... Um, raise some issues without it being too didactic. Um, but yeah, Simmons doesn't always have, she, she doesn't, she doesn't always have, like, she can't see the big picture sometimes. She just sees a solution and she wants to, uh, or a problem and she wants to find the solution to it. And life, the life doesn't work like that, but. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> I, I do really appreciate that Marvel does show so many different social aspects that know, there are a range of reactions to the totally. very human. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Sorry, I was looking at it. <laughs> um, so I think I have two questions. Like, you went and you talked about how, you know, you guys do episodes and they tie into the Marvel movies. I don't know if you guys as actors actually follow what's going on in the Marvel Universe when it comes to the movies, because you guys tie in. Yeah. So my first question is, do you guys follow that, and how excited do you guys get when you get to do those episodes that connect into what's going to happen when the movie's going to come out later on that week? Because yeah. obviously you guys film ahead. Right. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, we always try to pitch the idea that we need an early showing of all the different movies, and, uh, which, I don't know, those calls don't get answered, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, it's so cool. We're all huge fans of the movies, and... Um, for us to be able to um, tie in with that, for it to be, I mean, it's such a complicated process for the writers to have to, you know, figure out all the different threads going through and, and make it so that it's um, authentic and doesn't feel forced. 
Um, but it's it's super. I mean, this is the best. The the Marvel universe is the best thing to be in. We all pinch ourselves that we still get to be a part of it. So, so yeah, I can't wait for the movie to come out, and I can't wait to see how that affects our show. Cool. And my second one's more of a personal question. You said you did well, theater before. Yeah. Was there ever a time in your life that you wanted to be something besides an actress? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I I toyed with the idea of being a doctor and, you know, wanting to, I just love people, I'm fascinated by people, and so the, you know, it kind of made sense, maybe I want to help people, but no, no, it turns out I just want to be them. <laughs> <laughs> I think you always try and have backup, backup plans, and I've had a few of those, um, but nothing that is... So you don't definitely that. Yeah, right, that's easy, huh? <laughs> just go be a doctor, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, as an actress getting to come into this world where it's, there's a ready-made fandom for yeah. you pretty much, and it's deep <coughs> and wide and huge, um, but it, that experience as well as getting to work with some of the, the cast, you had you know, Clark Gray, you had Deborah James Olmos, Kyle MacLachlan, Lucy Lawless, yeah. they, they have their own fandoms and now they're all tied together, and what the gravitas that these actors bring. I'd just be interested in some of the experiences or what that has meant or if there's a cool story or something. It's crazy. I mean, the, the people that we get to work with is just, I mean, it is insane. And it's one of those uh, real out-of-body experiences that sometimes I'll still, I'll just kind of glance at Park in the scene. Oh my God, that is Coulson. And I am in a scene with him. It's just, it's, it's mad. And at the start, saying before there was a lot of pressure on the show is that I never felt nervous really I always felt very safe as soon as I mean you guys were so kind to us the second that it came out and I was I was nervous about that because Marvel is its fans and it wouldn't be what it is without you guys and and so to be to, fe to feel accepted um, into the Marvel universe as soon as that happened then everything else I knew would be fine because you know Marvel is so established and they know what they're doing and we felt like we were in very safe hands um, and then the guest stars that we get. I mean, Samuel L. Jackson, give me a break. <laughs> the first time I, I had a scene with him, and I was very, very, very professional. I was in the, hy I was in the, the hyperbaric chamber, as you do. And I stayed in it. The, they were like, Elizabeth, we think you should probably stay in here between takes. I said, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Just keep me like contained so I can't go and make a fool of myself. So the scene went really great. Didn't say anything too stupid, like kind of stayed professional and polite and everything. Didn't have any freak outs, could not believe it. After the scene is done, rep, I'm kind of on cloud nine, right? And then I was driving at the time, um, kind of a beat up car. And we'd have to park further away and then they were so lucky they would bring our cars to where the trailers are. So my car comes around the corner, and I mean, it's, it, was a, it was an old banger, right? So it came around the corner, and I just, I, it was called Kevin. I named it because I just, <laughs> I wanted to love it, so I did Kevin. So Kevin comes around the corner, and it's just so funny because there's real fancy cars on the lot, and then Kevin comes around the corner. And I was, the person that was driving it, I was like doing the Kevin dance, which is this weird dance. And, because I was always, it's just funny to see him, Kevin, the car on the, I don't know if this is a great story, but basically, <laughs> I was doing the Kevin dance as Kevin was coming around the corner, and who walked out but Samuel L. Jackson? And I had my back to him, was doing this like weird wiggle, and here comes my old beat up car, and I turned around and he was like, hey, you got some moves. <laughs> Nice about it. So it's just, I mean, moments like that when you are, you know, just being your goofy self, and here comes this huge movie star that turns out to be a normal person too. Is that's kind of crazy. Thanks. Well, I, I, I hate to say this, but I think we've probably only got time for one or two more uh, questions. So uh, uh, just, just giving you, uh, you and Lion the warning of that. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, so I think one of my favorite parts in the show uh, is in season two, I think, when um, Fitz has sort of been like hallucinating that Simmons is there like the entire time. And then she comes back and there's just this like block between them. And 
I just wanted to know like what how you felt about like that kind of plot twist. That yeah, I loved it. It was an interesting to play someone's imagination of you because I kind of had to all my motivations were Fitz, not Simmons. So it was kind of <coughs> funky to try and figure out how to do that. Um, but then, oh, those scenes when real Simmons came back, I mean, boy, Ian just blew me away in all of those scenes. He really did his research on what it, oh, what people go through when they have some sort of brain kind of um, injury or trauma. And he just, I mean, he, was just amazing and so every scene I had with him I would cry because I as Elizabeth found it so sad and I just couldn't help it. He had this little, little shake in his hand and he would just have all these mannerisms that I don't know you could just see so much behind his eyes and they had to the producers had to come and tell me you can't you can't cry in every scene. <laughs> you've got to you've got to hold something back. I am trying but you don't understand you need to like look into Ian's eyes and he's doing I felt very lucky to get to play opposite him in those moments, but yeah, there was yeah, there was definitely a block between them. Thank you. Thanks. Alright, so this is gonna be our last question. Hello. Hi. So, um, a couple episodes ago, Bobby and Hunter, you know, the really sad ending of that episode. Uh, Mac with the sh the Oh glass my! And that made me cry the most. Seeing yeah. him like, <laughs> hold back the tears. So how were the emotions on set for all of that? Oh, it was awful. Just the t we do a, a read of the of the script before we start shooting it, and we could the Paul Z wrote that episode and has gone on to write that created the the show. Um, he couldn't get through the stage directions <laughs> without crying. So obviously we had no hope. And that day was just so sad. And we all watched the episode together. I was sitting next to Adriana. I was just like grabbing. I was, I was, I mean, I felt bad because I was squeezing her, not even her hand, just her wrist. Like, I just needed like some bone to squeeze. So I was just squeezing it so hard. And I mean, it, it's sad. It's, it's a good thing that we're, so sad they're leaving because they're so wonderful to work with and the characters are just so brilliant and I can't when as soon as they were there I couldn't imagine a shield without them and we're so proud and pleased that you know the the universe is expanding in such a wonderful way that yeah it was um that was a really tough one but it's it's bittersweet because we're so happy for them but you know I'm sad for me for Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you very much. Should we just have one more thing? She's right there, just one more. One more. Okay, I'm being told, I'm being told one more is fine. No, yeah, one more. I appreciate that very much. I think everybody here would be very disappointed if we don't see the Kevin dance. Yay, yeah. I can't dance, by the way. Neither can I, it's all good. This is the whole point, really.